All right, welcome to the video uh, all about syncopated skip notes. Uh, now, in the uh, first video uh, in this month, uh, we talked all about syncopation, uh, what it is and all the tools you have uh, as a claw hammer banjo player for uh, adding syncopation into your arrangements. And in this video, I'm gonna cover a specific technique that I, uh, that I use for adding syncopation that I and perhaps a few other people refer to Ed as uh, syncopated skips or synco skips. Uh, this is a technique that uh, I get asked about quite a bit. Um, you'll find it in a lot of my arrangements, uh, uh, including a lot of the arrangements for the uh, Tune of the Week uh, series. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, syncopation. I love adding it into my uh, playing, and in particular, I love using this technique. The technique itself involves uh, combining a skip note uh, with uh, a note from, uh, generated by the thumb, either on the fifth string or as a drop thumb. So your first question may be, just what is a skip note, right? So a skip note is basically how it sounds. Uh, it's, it's a note where uh, you motion as if you're, about, you're going to strike the string with your picking finger, but, you don't, but your finger doesn't actually come in contact with the string. So for example, if I'm playing uh, a strike with my picking finger on the first string, it would sound like this. And if I play it as a skip note, it sounds like this. There's nothing, right? So I've made the same motion with my uh, picking hand, but I've deliberately missed the string. So why on earth would I do such a thing? Well. What the skip note allows you to do is add space to an arrangement uh, without having to break the claw hammer motion. You've probably heard me say many times before that one of the most important things for us to do when we're playing claw hammer banjo is to always keep our hand moving in that up and down claw hammer motion uh, so that we uh, give our music that uh, signature uh, drive of the claw hammer banjo sound. And so skip notes allow us to, to create some space without ever having to break that, that movement. One place that they can be uh, useful to put in is with vocal backup. So giving that sparser sound uh, oftentimes helps to sort of highlight the uh, vocals uh, above the banjo. But the place where I use it the most is with uh, adding in syncopation uh, to an arrangement, which we're now gonna cover. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you a series of six progressive exercises that will cover both uh, skip notes as well as syncopated skips, okay? Um, and I'd recommend that you work through each of these in sequence and practice them repeatedly uh, until you get each one down until it's almost become second nature and then move to the next one. So for this first exercise, we're just gonna be playing a basic bum ditty pattern in each measure. Only what we're going to do is skip the second dit part of every measure. Okay, so we're gonna skip the dip. All right, so here's what it looks like in tab. And you'll notice there that the skip note is, is denoted by a shaded box. And the, the uh, number you see inside the box is the note that I would hit if I weren't playing it as a skip note. Okay, so here's how this one should sound. For this second exercise, we're gonna play a bum ditty bump a ditty pattern, and uh, we're gonna be using a drop thumb to play the drum bump a ditty pattern, and we're gonna be replacing that first bump with a skip note, okay? So this is what the tab for that looks like, and here's how that should sound. And you can hear that what that does is it places some extra emphasis on that drop thumb note because the note before it has been skipped, okay? 
For the third exercise, we're gonna continue that same pattern, only we're gonna drop out both notes that occur around that drop thumb. So both the bump and the dit uh, we're gonna skip, okay? So here's what that's, that looks like in tab, and here's what it should sound like. And you should hear there that th that highlights that drop thumb even more. And this is, a, this is a pattern that I use quite a bit, particularly when I'm syncopating a note by moving it from that second downbeat, which I knew, usually hit uh, with my picking finger, uh, and shifting it to, to instead to that drop thumb note. And by surrounding it uh, with those two skips, it places extra emphasis on it and highlights it. Now we're gonna take that pattern one step further by dropping out the first dit in our bum ditty, uh, which looks like this in tab. And so you'll see there that the only time in each measure that we're gonna be striking a string with our picking finger is on that very first downbeat. So here's what that should sound like. Okay, for these last two exercises, we're gonna to get to some really syncopated sounds. Um, and we're gonna do this by sort of continuing that uh, bump a ditty pattern across measures. So here's what this fifth exercise looks like in tab. And here's what it should sound like. We speed that up a little bit, it sounds like this. And you can hear how much syncopation that gives it. For this last exercise, we're gonna do something similar, only this time we're gonna be uh, writing that uh, second string even more. So here's what the sixth exercise looks like in tab, and here's how that should sound. That last particular lick was shown to me uh, by Mark Johnson, who, uh, for those of you who don't know, is known for playing uh, clawhammer banjo in, a bluegrass, uh, in bluegrass bands and in bluegrass contexts. And that lick does a really good job of mirroring the forward roll that you would hear in Scruggs style banjo. And when I first heard it, it blew my mind and I was so excited I went back and tried to add it into every tune that I could. So those are the various ways uh, that you can add in these skip notes and sk syncopated skips to your arrangement. And I think you can hear just from these examples that this really opens up a whole other world of, of rhythmic possibilities for you uh, with your playing. So uh, practice these exercises until they start, sort of start to become second nature. And then uh, see about trying to, to add any of these uh, techniques into your own playing. So have fun with it. And of course, as always, if you have any questions, uh, let me know at josh at clawhammerbanjo.net and otherwise I'll see you in the next video.